Peace and blessings, Israel. We're we in the book of John, chapter 4. The Apostle John, chapter 4, in verse 23. So these are the words that Jesus Christ spoke unto the woman of Samaria, which was an Israelite dwelling in Samaria and these are the words that he spoke unto her but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him So the Most High, the Heavenly Father, seeks of Israel to worship him. In what way? In spirit and in truth. And in order to learn how to worship the Father in a spiritual way and in truth, we have to be taught that of Christ. That's why I said the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. Now that the Messiah, the Christ of Israel, was there among the children of Israel, and at this particular point, speaking to the Israelite woman of Samaria, by the Messiah, the Christ of Israel, being among them, now, that's why I said the hour cometh and now is, now, when the true worshippers shall worship, worship the Father in spirit and truth. So the worshiping of the Most High, how we follow him, how we pray to him, how we live our life according to his ways, it has to be in spirit. We have to be spiritual about it and in truth. The true way to worship the Father. Because the Most High seeks of Israel to worship him in spirit and truth through Christ. So, when we read in the book of John, also, chapter 6, verse, six, six, uh, verse 63, Christ tells us something. He's teaching us something on how we learn to worship the Father and Spirit. So this is John 6, 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. So it is the Spirit that gives us life. The flesh profited nothing. So the flesh in this context means the carnal mind. The words that I speak unto you, the words that Jesus Christ spoke unto Israel, they are spirit, see? So to learn how to worship the Father in spirit, we have to be taught and learned of the Father through Christ. That's why I said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. So it's the teachers of Jesus Christ, that's what quickens us. That's what that's what gives us life. That which, that, that That is that which gives us a spiritual mind. That's why it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh, the sinful carnal flesh that we're all born into, that we must put off and be born again of, 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 of water and of spirit through Christ. That has to be accomplished. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words of Jesus Christ are life given to us. They take us out of that sinful, dead state when we're living in sin. He delivers us from that dead and sinful state through his words. He said the words, the words that I speak unto, they are spirit and they are life. So remember he he he, he was 
teaching the woman of Samaria, speaking to her, and he said, The hour is come, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. So, what he's basically telling her is that the Messiah of Israel, the Christ, was there. Was there among Israel. Was there speaking to her. And now that he was there among Israel, they would learn how to be spiritual in their worship of the Father. They would learn how to be how to be spiritual and worship the Most High in truth. The way he intended. The only way. According to the scriptures as it is written. Christ came to teach us those things. So remember we just read in John 6.63. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. So let's go to Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18. And what we're going to read there is that. The words that Christ spoke. Which makes us spiritual and are life given, like we just read in the latter part of verse 63. Those are the words that the Most High puts in, in the Lord's mouth. See, when Christ spoke, those are the words of the Most High, the Heavenly Father, the Creator, that He spoke to Israel. And the words that He spoke makes us spiritual. And we learn how to worship the Father in truth through Christ. So let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. And verse 18. So this is when the Most High was speaking to Moses in the wilderness. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 18. So Deuteronomy 18, 18. It says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. See, when the Lord was talking to the woman of Samaria, that was her brother. When the Lord went up there in Samaria and was offering the woman of Samaria the living water and when he taught her that the father seeks of the father for her, for Israel to worship him in spirit and truth and that the hour was come that he was there among Israel to learn how to worship the father in spirit and truth that was her brother. Remember, earlier in the chapter, when you read, she said, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? See, let's get that point, because it said of thy, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. So this prophet that, that, that we're reading here in Deuteronomy 18, 18, is greater than Joshua. Because some, some Israelites will falsely teach that that's talking about Joshua. That's, that's not talking about Joshua. This prophet that it's talking about is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, the Redeemer of Israel. The one whose days are from old and from everlasting. According to Micah 5 and 2, because the Messiah, the Christ of Israel, he was with God before the world was. So the Most High was telling Moses, I, that's the Most High, will raise them up. The them is Israel, a prophet, from among their brethren. What, what tribe was Jesus Christ from? Like it tells us in Hebrews 7, 14. It is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So the Lord, the Christ, the Messiah of Israel, the prophet, like unto Moses here, that's Jesus Christ. He came from the tribe of Judah. From among the brethren of Israel. The woman of Samaria was an Israelite too. So when the Lord was speaking to her, that was her brother. But 
more than just her brother, he was the prophet of Israel. But the prophecy is telling us that the prophet of Israel would be born out of our nation. He wouldn't come from another nation. So then it says, like unto thee, meaning like Moses, because that's who the Most High is speaking to. So this prophet would be like unto Moses, meaning a mediator, a intercessor, a ruler, a judge, a deliverer. So he would be similar unto Moses as, as, as a mediator, intercessor between the Most High and Israel. And will put my words in his mouth. So who is the my? The Most High. The Most High would put his words in his mouth. Who is the his mouth? The prophet. Because the prophet speaks the message of the Most High. And that's what Christ spoke. So when Christ said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Well, of course they are. Because the Most High put his words in the prophet's mouth. The mouth of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that was born in Bethlehem of Judah. Who was crucified and killed and risen from the dead. Our sins. And declared to be the son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. And after 40 days of being, of being with his disciples after his resurrection... Speaking to them of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, he ascended to sit on the right hand of the Father. To exercise the power and authority that was given unto him in his resurrection from the dead. What power was that? He, he declared to his disciples after his resurrection, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So Christ sitteth on the right hand of the Father. In beginning to fulfill Psalm 110 and 1. And he abides as the, the Messiah of Israel, and he lives eternally. He said, I, I live forever, when he, when he appeared to the Apostle John in the book of Revelation 1. So Deuteronomy 18, 18, I will put my words, and will put my words in his mouth. The Most High will put the words, his words, in the mouth of Christ. So, of course, the words that Christ spoke are life-giving. They are spiritual. He said it. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. Why? Because the author of life, the Most High, spoke the words that Christ spoke to Israel. He put it in his mouth, put it in his heart and mouth to speak. Latter part of verse 18. And he, meaning Jesus Christ, shall speak or teach unto them, who is the them? His brethren. Who is his brethren? The children of Israel. All that I shall command him. So everything that Christ ever taught throughout the Gospels, the Most High commanded him to speak those words. Everything that Christ spoke, everything that Christ did, everything that Christ taught, he spoke the things that the Most High commanded him to speak. Christ taught the two great commandments according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, and Leviticus 19, 17, and 8. The Most High put those words in his mouth. Christ taught against murder, adultery, stealing, serving other gods. He, he taught against divorce unrighteously. He taught against covetousness he taught us how to pray how to fast how to do alms deeds the most high commanded him to speak those words christ said thou art forgiven men of israel thought that that was blasphemy but the most high spoke through that man jesus christ the son of god when he taught the woman that was caught in the act of adultery Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. That was the Most High that spoke Christ to speak those words. But a lot of Israelites had a serious problem with that. Because spiritually they couldn't discern 
that he was that prophet of Deuteronomy 1818. They thought many times Christ spoke his own words and his own doctrine and teaching, and it wasn't. He said, my doctrine is not mine, but the Father that speaks. So Israel didn't understand that, many of them. That's why they stumbled at Christ and ended up conspiring to kill him and murder him. So he said, he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now remember the, the first part of the verse said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. So when the Lord was speaking to the Israelite woman of Samaria, that was her brother. Spiritually, her Lord. When you really get into the essence of, of Christ, but that was her brother at the same time because it behooved Christ, like it tells us in the book of Hebrews, to be made like unto his what? Brethren, his brothers and sisters. I mean, he had to come on this earth just like we did. So, according to the prophecy. So let's go back to the book of John chapter 4. So let's go to the book of John, chapter 4. John, chapter 4. But let's read verse... Are thou, this was the Israelite woman of Samaria speaking to Jesus Christ, are thou, meaning are you, greater than our, that's a key word, our father, meaning our forefather, Jacob. So for her to be telling, speaking these words to Jesus Christ, that would make Jesus Christ her brother. And the Most High said to Moses, I'll raise them up a prophet from among their what? Brethren. So Christ came for the woman of Samaria. Christ came for, the, for many of the, of the Israelites that dwelt in her town or village. He taught them for two days when you read at the end of this chapter. Beware of these different Israelite groups that teach that the woman of Samaria was of another nation. She was not of another nation. What you had was you had the circumcision of Israel. They didn't deal with the Israelites and Samaria. that internal hatred and strife between two groups of Israel of the same nation. And this chapter goes into a little of, 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 or really a lot of why there was that division. But the point is, you know, staying on track was that um, this woman was, a, was she was an Israelite. And, and this proves this because if she was lying somehow, the Lord would have corrected her. But she's speaking the truth. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? So the only way you could say these words, because we know that Christ was of the seed of Jacob, from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob had uh, Judah, that was one of his sons. And from that tribe is where the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth came from, because it behooved them to be made like unto his brethren. So he came from the spiritual realm and he came on this earth to fulfill the prophecies that were written of him, how he would come from the seed of David. So it says, are thou greater? Are you a greater man than our father Jacob? So the only way one can say this, you would have to be of Jacob. Okay, if you're a so-called black or Hispanic, you wouldn't say that about an Italian man. Are you greater than our father, you know, Giuseppe? No, you wouldn't say that because two different nations. So what we're reading here is 
art thou greater than our father Jacob? Now, you are greater man than our father Jacob. Why is she saying this? Because when you, uh, I'll read verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth, and who it is that saith to thee, give me the drink. Because he asked her for a drink of water, because he was thirsty from his journey. And she was shocked that she would ask him of a drink of water. That he would ask her, ask her of a drink of water because the, the Israelites of, of you know Judea, Jerusalem, and the, the circumcision of Israel, raising the law of Moses, circumcised the eighth day, so on and so forth, they didn't deal with the Israelite brothers and sisters in Samaria. Now, no, not so much to even drink water from them. They didn't associate themselves with them. They despised them. They even called Christ a Samaritan knowing very well that Joseph and Mary was his father and mother, and they called him a Samaritan, because that was a derogatory term. To call a, a Israelite a Samaritan, that was a dis, disrespectful. And that's, they disrespected Christ in John 8, because they, they called him a Samaritan. Why? Because they're of their father, the devil. They had Satan in them. So you could be an Israelite of the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Issachar, Ash, whatever. And if we have this spirit of hatred in us, and we hate the Most High in Christ, and, and we hate Israel, then we're our fathers, the devil. We're our fathers, the Satan. And we're not the children of Abraham. We may be by lineage, but not spiritually. We're the children of Cain. Cain was a murderer. And, 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 and Cain murdered because Satan was his father. So she was shocked that he would even deal with her. But the law was about bringing the tribes of Israel together. So he asked her for a drink of water. Then the Lord says, Jesus answered and said, Arthur, if thou knewest the gift of God, I mean, if you knew what if you knew the gift of God, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me the drink? Because who is asking her for a drink of water? The one who has the living water to give unto her. Thou would have asked of him, meaning you would be asking me, and he would have given thee living water. So he basically what he's, because he asked her for a drink of water, and she's shocked that he would even be dealing with her. So he come back and say, if you only knew the gift of God, and who it is that's speaking to you right now, asking you for a drink of water, you would be asking of him and he would be giving you living water. I'm asking you for water from the well, from Jacob's well. I got the, I got the living water. I have the living, spiritual, life-giving water at my disposal. If you only knew the gift of God and who it is that speaketh and asketh you of a drink of water, you would ask of him and he would give you the living water. See, the law was... trying to explain to her I'm asking you for water from Jacob's well I got the living water and if you only knew the gift of God and who it is that's speaking to you right now you would be asking him right now for the living water the woman saith unto him sir thou hast nothing to draw with meaning you don't have a, a pail or, or, or some type of jar to draw water with and the well is deep. The well runs real deep. You don't have any jar to draw this water with. From whence then hast thou that living water? So how you got that living water to give? See, so what was happening here, she wasn't spiritually comprehending what Christ was speaking to her pertaining to what? The living water. Because the living water that Christ can give, it, it, it's not actual water. It's not water that would come from Jacob's well. Because that water, you're just thirst again. So she's not comprehending what the Lord is, is speaking to her because he's speaking spiritual and she's thinking carnal that like, okay, I'm going to drink some water, you know, and then I live forever. No, it don't. It just, no. That's not how it works. We have to drink of the spiritual water to be spiritual, to worship God in spirit and truth, to abound in the fruits of the spirit, 
to eventually, at the Lord's coming, live eternally. Because if, if the world is living, that means you don't die. It's eternal. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Are you a greater man than our forefather Jacob? So that proved she's an Israelite. It's not, you know, a lot of these Israelites teach falsely. Oh, this woman was a Hamite. She was an Ethiopian transplant in the land. We got to stay in the scriptures, the simplicity of what the scriptures are telling us. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Which gave us the well. Who is the us? Our people, our forefathers and mothers. That's what she's talking about. Jacob didn't give that well for the other nations. He gave it for his children, Israelites. That's who the Lord is speaking with, an Israelite woman. And drank. There of himself, meaning he himself drank from this water. So you're greater, you're, you're greater, you got some living water to give? Are you, are you, so, are you greater than Jacob? Because in other words, she said, you got to be somebody greater than Jacob. We're talking about living water. And his children, his children drank, the, the, his, the sons of Israel, his daughter, and his what? Cattle. Even his cattle, his descendants, drank water. And the cattle drank water from this well. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Meaning, whosoever drinks of this water that comes from Jacob's well, eventually they're going to thirst again. That whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. Meaning, within that person, see, a well of water. See, within a person is a well of water springing up, bubbling up into what? Life everlasting. So what the Lord is speaking to here is what he t was teaching Nicodemus, being born of the spirit, the spiritual living water, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the, 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 pro the promise of the Father, the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Okay, so let's get back to this point. But the hour cometh and now is, verse 23, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit, meaning in a spiritual way and in truth. Now remember, we just read in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So by Christ speaking the words of the Father, then we would learn how to worship them in what? Truth. Because the Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, they weren't doing the job. They weren't spiritually feeding the children of Israel. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah 23 and 1, it says, Woe be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. And, and remember in the book of Mark chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion upon them. Why? Because they were fainting. And they told us that as they were sheep having no what? Shepherd. Wait a minute. They had the, the Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees at the temple of Jerusalem and the synagogues teaching. Why would he say that they had no shepherds? That's why he's the good shepherd. Many people can quote script teachers set up churches churches worldwide they all claim they got the truth and they're the apostles and prophets of the most high but in their doctrines all they're doing is scattering the most high sheep because they got our people into idolatrous man worship teaching doctrines like reincarnation through witchcraft called a regeneration making images of the of the most high in christ the godhead justifying it twisting the word of god you have doctrines where to be in the truth, you got to join this camp or that camp. They're the home of truth. Christ said, the, he said, the hour is coming now is. He didn't set up ISUPK or none of these splinter groups that came out of ISUPK. He said, the hour is coming now is. When it, that's going all the way back to Christ and the woman Samaria. Where you get 1969 from that? The home of truth. The home of lies. You got to repent. 
We got to repent from idolatrous man worship. That's what's going on in a lot of these so-called Israelite camps. Idolatrous man worship. And like Jeremiah said, my people love to have it so. They love idolatrous man worship. They where they hate abomination vehemently. So he said, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, in a spiritual way, and in truth. Because that which is born of the spirit is spirit, meaning spiritual. But that which is born of the flesh is what? Is flesh, meaning carnal. That's why he said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He said the flesh profited nothing. The part where he said, that which is born of the spirit is spirit, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's John 3, when the Lord was speaking to Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. That he also wasn't spiritually comprehending in the beginning when Christ was speaking about becoming uh, born of the spirit and born again. So you had one Israelite of the circumcision, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He needed to be taught how to learn to worship the Father, Spirit, and truth, although he was already a master in Israel. And then the next chapter, he travels up to Samaria and teaches her the same doctrine. See, the Lord's doctrine was always the same, no matter who he came across. The circumcision of Israel, uncircumcision, Israel's, you know, raising the law of Moses, Israel straight up dealing in false gods, idolatry of the other nations, whatever it may be. It was always the same message. The simplicity of God's word. That's what Christ came to teach. So he said, The hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father, meaning the Most High, the Heavenly Father, seeketh such, meaning seeks of Israel, as worshippers, to worship him. Verse 24, God is what? A spirit, capital S. He's a spiritual living power. He's spiritual. And they that worship him must, see, must. That's why he said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. See, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So we have to be spiritual how we Worship God. And when we're dealing with doctrines of corrupt men, holding idolatrous man worship, traditions of men, adding to the scriptures, we're not worshiping God in a spiritual way. Neither is it in truth. It's the truth of men. It's the spirit of error and lies that we're in. See, the most high spirit and truth is not corrupt. It's righteous. It's pure. That the doctrines of carnal men, corrupt men that have given themselves flattering titles of bishops and elders and deacons and captains and generals and priests, these are self-appointed titles that they gave themselves as a stepping stone to promote and exalt them to be worshipped. Really, that's what's happening. That's the Christ that our brothers is worshiping these different camps, the elders. That's why they have images of corrupt men in their camps. That's being touted as the true image of Christ. No, it's, it's the true image of corrupt men. None of these images that these Israelites have promoted describe in any way what, how John described, the, or the apostle John described the Lord. The Lord didn't have purple skin and um, crown of thorns on his head with his chest all out with a prideful look, arrogant look. That's why the Lord said that they that make them are like unto them. Meaning when you make images, when you make images of corruptible men, you become like them. You become corruptible. You take on the nature of the images you make, deaf, dumb, and blind, prideful. You put on that spirit. You all take on that same personality, that same pridefulness. It's, 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 it's spiritual wickedness in high places that got our people into this idolatrous man. With the Lord trying to get us out of that. He's trying to teach us how to worship the Father in a spiritual way and in truth. 
But all these doctrines in Israel, they focus on the flesh, the outward. But the inward is neglected. The inner man has to change first, then the outward. So no, the Lord did not have a crown of thorns on his head when he appeared to the Apostle John. The, the Romans did that to make mockery of Christ. No crown of thorns on his head. So we got to repent, Israel. We cannot put the true image of Christ, make an image of Christ, image made like the corruptible man, and put a crown of thorns on his head with a prideful look. Acts 17 tells us that's wrong, so we got to repent. That's ignorance. We got, the Lord said, in our ignorance, we must repent. So we have a lot of repenting to do when we're dealing with images of the Godhead. Verse 24, God is a spirit, so the Most High is a, is a spiritual living power. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit, meaning spiritually and in truth. So, um, let's bring out a point in verse 21. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So the hour would come when she would learn to worship the Father, but it would be neither in Jerusalem nor in the land that she was at in Samaria. Although Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Israel worshiped the Most High in Samaria during the times of, of the history when you go into the scriptures, Abraham, Jacob built an altar there in uh, Shechem in Samaria. And worship the Most High. So, in Jerusalem, you had the temple at Jerusalem. And Israel worshiped the Most High there. But Christ was saying that to learn how to truly worship the Father, Spirit, and Truth, you ain't going to learn that in Samaria. You ain't even going to learn it in Jerusalem. It's not about places, it's not about temples. It's about worshiping God in spirit and truth. <clears throat> so we'll end it here. Psalm 51. <clears throat> Psalm 51 and 5. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. See, so in our mother's womb, we're being shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. So we're born into sin. That's why Christ said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's all men. All Israel, we're all born in, this, in the flesh. And that which is born of the flesh is what? Flesh. Remember, Christ said the flesh profited nothing. And we're born in this flesh, we're born into sin. That started when sin was first introduced. That brought in sin through Adam and Eve. I was shaping in it. So this is not an excuse, by the way. A lot of Israel will use it as an excuse to, to give in a temptation and break God's commandments and then come with, well, I, w I was born and shaped. And David is not saying this as an excuse. He's just stating the fact how carnal he is and how spiritual the Most High is. And the flesh got the best of him. He committed adultery with Bathsheba. So he didn't apply himself in the commandments of God. He gave in the temptation. He gave in to the flesh. So you have some Israelite ATs. Well, sin, sin is it's 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 in your DNA. It's hereditary. Be careful with that. Yes, David did say what he said, but it's not as an excuse. And Christ said what he said. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we can't overcome this flesh. So he said, behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. So we, we're born in sin. We come out of our mother's womb, we're, we're, we're born into sin. We could be raised in the law of Moses, circumcised, eight circumcised, eight day raised in the law of Moses. In this flesh, you're going to sin. So that when we start to be taught and learn of the Father through Christ, we begin a process, a lifetime process. That's called being born again. 
that we need the spirit of the Most High to be within us, to be born again. We need to learn to worship him in spirit and truth. And that's what David was trying to attain. Check this out, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth. Did not Christ say, the Father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in what? Truth. So David is teaching the same thing Jesus Christ did. Because they both in the spirit. John 6, 63, Christ is in the spirit of the Most High. Psalm 51 and 6, David is in the spirit of the Most High. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts. See? That's what the Lord was telling the woman of Samaria. You got to worship God in your spirit. It's not about here in Samaria or at Jerusalem, the temple of Jerusalem. She go to the temple of Jerusalem, she going to learn traditions of men. She going to learn, she going to hear men say the law but not do it. So how are you going to really spiritually grow if you don't have that righteous example? Well, Christ was that example. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, meaning deep within us. That's why that living water, we got to drink it deeply. In the inward part, let it settle in our inward parts, deep in our inward part, deep in our soul and spirit. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know what? Wisdom, see? The wisdom to worship God in spirit and truth. David is saying, in the hidden part, deep, the hidden part, that's talking about the heart, the heart within our heart, within our mind, deep in our spirit. The most high would make us to know wisdom. And how is that? Through the living water that Christ came to get. So, Lord will, we get back on this topic another time. The Most High in the name of Christ and Nazareth, bless us all. Peace and blessings to your home. Pray for one another. Pray for Israel. Peace and blessings.